He's all the way from Liverpool in the UK. We need a, we need a round of applause. Karen, start a lovely round of applause before. Do that again for us, Karen. Beautiful, the crowd. The crowd and a lot of weeping, cheering and hollering. He's up to say, the wonderful Scotty Davis! Yeah. All right. Yeah. You all right, yeah? yeah? I'm feeling pretty fucking spectacular. So is the microphone. But uh, I'm, I'm rocking out this new look at the minute and uh, I'm not too sure about it because... No, I look a little bit like uh, Clark Kent if he was getting changed running through a gap. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, but uh, does anyone here live in... Does it... Does... does, does, does I, sound like, I sound like the deep from before. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've, been, I've just realised as I was walking in here today that I've been living in Asia for uh, exactly 10 years this month. Uh, does anyone else here live in Asia? Yeah. It's a great continent, isn't it? I, I was just recently reading an article yesterday about a uh, uh, fake meat scandal in uh, China. And uh, apparently a 900 strong gang were rounded up by authorities. And uh, basically they made 1.5 million dollars. And uh, I needed that later on as a pro. <laughs> they made 1.5 million dollars trying to sell fox, mink and rat as mutton and beef. Now if someone served me rat instead of beef, I, I think I'd be able to tell the difference. I mean, I've never ever tasted rat, but I'm pretty confident that a T-bone steak is not this fucking big. <laughs> now, you can say what you like about the Chinese, but it proves that nobody has beef with them. Oh, hello. But I don't know why they don't just sell it as rat anyway. It doesn't make any sense. Has anyone here been to China? Anything that moves is pretty fair game for food. I think it's safe to say. So they could have sold it as rat anyway. The only, the only difference being, it, the only difference being, it, if they sell it as rat, is. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah, I'm gonna keep going. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, moving on. Uh, does anybody here work in insurance? No, good, because I'm gonna talk some shit about them because the thieving, lying, corporate fucking scumbags, man. Yeah. Hey. Uh, a while back when I was living in Liverpool, I wanted to insure my property against uh, my... Pro sounds, like sounds like I own a property. But I, was, I wanted to insure my uh, apartment against theft. I wanted to try and find the biggest, the best kind of like cover I could get against theft, against theft. So I called up this insurance company and they said, well, you can have our platinum package, but it's going to be pretty pricey because you live in an area that carries a high risk of theft. I said, yeah, I know. How many calls do you get? from people who live in an area with no risk. <laughs> um, she said, in, in order for us to, uh, uh, to, in order for you to take out an insurance policy, Mr. Dave, what you're gonna have to do is, uh, your property needs to be installed with some security features that meet our mandatory regulations. And they were, well, there's quite a few. Uh, first one was double lock, double lock and window bolts. I'm shaking, I need a fucking drink. Double lock and window bolts, window alarms, windows. <laughs> Central alarm system, uh, motion sensors, two triple shafted chub security units for each entrance to the property, call, uh, well, commonly known as multiple an and last multiple anti theft stickers that were vis on visible areas of my property declaring my security features. I said to her, okay then, so if I install all them security features, what would be the fucking point of having theft insurance? She also said I would have to get a security certificate as proof of installation of the security features. And I said, well, I forget the exact cost of the uh, security certificate, but it must have been pretty extortionate because I, I cried a bit. And uh, ironically, I felt like I was being robbed. <laughs> so I said to her, look, the combined, the combined cost of the security certificate along with all the security features is worth more than the entire contents of my apartment. <laughs> they, the slimy bastard have put me in a position where I would be much better off getting burgled just so I could replace all my old possessions with new ones with the money I'd save by not getting a theft policy. <laughs> uh, and then she, she said to me, well, why do you want our premium package, our, our platinum package, if the contents of your apartment are of little value to you in, your in the first place? I said, good question. The reason I want this policy it's basically because 
I was hoping to receive a large payout once I've staged the fake burglary of my own apartment. <laughs> and she said, Mr. Davis, that's exactly how she sounded. She said, Mr. Davis, that amounts to nothing more than fraud and stealing. I said, you're forgetting the whole point that I live in an area of high risk of theft. <laughs> and besides, you fucking started it. Fucking scumbags, man, honestly. Um, going on dates for me is a little bit awkward. It's really, it's, it's, they're always weird for me. Like, I was dating this girl like a good while back. And, uh, is that, <laughs> is that funny that I date women? Fucking hell. <laughs> dating this girl, huh? So, anyway, I was dating this girl a good while back, and, um, uh, I still hadn't had sex with her by the third date. So, we arranged to meet for a uh, for a casual lunch one Saturday afternoon. And uh, it was that casual that during lunch she said she suggested that afterwards we go for a colonic irrigation together. My internal response was, will this here, is this a test, punch it in the face and run away? <laughs> My external response was, while well, trying to impress her to get her into bed, but at the same time not fully embracing the idea of being anally probed that, that afternoon was, Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we went to the bunk clinic, and uh, that's what you call them. And we were taken away by our separate colon carers. What, what would you call them? Uh, dump doctors? Bum bitches? <laughs> so anyway, I was led away by my male bum bitch to a room that... Oh, there's a sentence I never thought I'd say. <laughs> Let's call him a dump doctor, okay? So uh, I was led away by my dump doctor to a room and inside the room there was this massive uh, metal tank and it had all kinds of dials and buttons on there. Directly opposite was a hospital style bed that had a, it was inclined at about a 45 degree angle and it had a seat there and there was a cutout in the seat and there was a, a plastic tube about the size of a finger pointing in the exact same place where you'd expect to find an asshole, which is weird because I wasn't in the White House. <laughs> And uh, so the, the dump doctor said to me, what I need to do is, I need to massage your lower abdomen. I was like, okay. And he said, don't worry. <laughs> he said, don't worry, this is all routine and perfectly normal. Now, I've never been in that situation before and I had no experience to draw from. What the fuck was normal in these circumstances? He, he, he could have instructed any naive first timer to do anything they wanted and they'd have done it. But obviously, as you can tell from my appearance, I'm a bit street, and I ain't no fool. <laughs> anyway, after I finished sucking them off... <laughs> I'm only joking. Like, uh, one time I told that joke and someone in the audience said, uh, uh, Did you really suck them off? I was like, it's just a joke for the purposes of comedy. What kind of animal do you take me for? And no, in reality, he fucked me. <laughs> Anyway, so I sat on this inclined seat and uh, I put the blue gown on and he pressed the button and without any warning the seat started just lowering down. And I was like, whoa! I was like, a guy needs a heads up for that kind of thing. 20 minutes ago I was on a casual date eating coronation chicken and now some dude is mechanically lowering my asshole onto a, onto a plastic tube. <laughs> Safe to say, I didn't leave the house that day prepared for that shit. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, um, the next th what I'm going to do next for you is I'm going to do a visual reenactment of what happened because, and it's not what strictly happened physically in reality. This is how it psych psychologically went down, went up, in my mind, in reality. So, this represents my bum hole. I don't know why it's that big. I can hell. <laughs> <laughs> that represents my bum hole, and uh, it was the size of a finger, as I say, but in my head, it was like that. <laughs> so here we go, here's the visual reenactment of what it's like to get a colonic irrigation after casual lunch.
getting into this story as much as the story got into me. <laughs> so, I'm going to skip a few stages and go to outside. Now, I would honestly, after all that, recommend getting a colonic in a geisha because I love a good shit. And this was the best shit ever. It's like the Lamborghini of shits. And when it came onto there, I felt as light as a feather. Honestly, it was like... It was like I was floating, it was almost as though I was like walking on the moon. It was like, wow. But at the same time, right, I was walking a bit funny because of all the penetration. So if you'd have seen me coming out that bunk clinic that afternoon, I, I would have looked something like a cross between Buzz Aldrin and John Wayne. <laughs> Honestly, so uh, anyway, I must have impressed me date because with my modern approach towards uh, modern health trends, because we ended up back at her apartment and we started making out on a expensive designer Armani sofa. So, so, um, <laughs> cream suede, that's Leah. <laughs> and I was like, at last, I'm finally gonna get here. It's only taken three dates to credit the cards, and I saw a bum. But I'm finally going to get the hand to it. And we were getting a bit frisky. And then, bam, out of nowhere, she shoves her finger up my bum. She was playing the long game. She was playing the long game. I felt used, man. Honestly. I wasn't clapping, honestly. She played the long game and I was just like, that was the second time that day that some of the... Uh, it penetrated my bum against my will without any prior warning. There's a very, very, very small chance that I might just enjoy it if, if I'd have had a bit of uh, prior verbal consent beforehand. Uh, so anyway, she's, she's looking me in the eye for some kind of response. And she's, and she's having a fucking great time as well. I'm just like, this is weird. So I'm looking at her and I'm just like... <sighs> I was like, I just wanted to run, like, but I just thought, no, I'm grateful for the attention. <laughs> and then uh, she's having a good go and then it's, she, she suddenly pulls it out and I'm just like, whoa. My internal response was, ow that hurt, surely I passed the test, punch you in the face and run away. My external response was, I shat a litre of cold on water all over the couch. <laughs> what you do in that situation? I'll tell you what I've done. I looked her in the eye. Funny enough, I've never seen it again. I looked it in the eye and I said, the only, the only sentence I could think of beforehand. Short. <laughs> Turns out she was. Fucking fuck off, you scumbag. Thank you very much. I'm famous. You've been nothing but wonderful. Thank you very much. It's going to get even better from here. Thank you very much. Bye bye. <laughs> Mr. Scotty Davis.